Recovery Shared, your online source for all things recovery. My name is Justin Sims. I'm here with uh, my co-host Michael Stone and our very special guest today, Hannah. Hannah, welcome. Hey, thanks Justin for having me. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> thanks for being here. So Hannah, today we're going to dive into the story that makes up your life. So I have a few learning disabilities, so I didn't do the best in school in terms of staying focused. Accompany that with some trauma, it's really hard to stay focused in a sit still focused um, environment. So started drinking to cope with like my own happiness at, at what 11. Age? At 11? Yeah. Uh, I was drinking at school, sneaking out at night. Um, so 11 is what, fifth grade, sixth grade? Fifth, sixth grade, yeah. So I had my first drink at 11. Obviously I didn't drink and like immediately start doing hard drugs and like sneaking out. Right. But like by 13. Uh, I was sneaking out, um, drinking, I was hiding liquor all over my house. So, so your judgment's out the window on a pretty regular basis at 13. What kind of other bad doors did that open? Yeah, I mean, I put myself in a lot of dangerous situations. I was sexually assaulted at 13, 14. Do you think that was a situation that would have been avoided if you had not been using drugs and alcohol? Uh, probably, yeah. Okay. Most likely, I think when you drink and you do, when I drink, I do things I normally wouldn't go, do. I go places I normally wouldn't go. I say things I normally wouldn't say. Trust people that you wouldn't trust, yeah. etc. So that little girl that's out it. there, mm -hmm. that's like, oh, I like to smoke weed and drink on the weekends, and I'll try this drug every now and then, and I'm hanging out with these boys. Yeah. What would you tell that kid right now? Because you were that kid. Yeah. And it got you into some bad situations. Well, and I thought at that age, I thought that I. Kn I had everything under control. I thought I knew what I was doing. People needed to trust me more, have more faith in me, and like just let me do whatever I wanted. And I thought people were just trying to control me. I didn't realize that like people were trying to protect me. And uh, I thought I, I, I knew it all. So if I'm if I'm one of the people, let's figure it out. You're your 13 year old Hannah. Here's two people in your life that are concerned about you. And listen, I'm really concerned. You know your behavior. Your, your mm -hmm. blah blah blah. All these issues. All these these red flags, and you're going, I need more space. You need to give me more room. I'm an adult. I've got this. I'll figure it out. Yeah. How does someone in, this, in that situation decipher the difference between someone that's really genuinely, selflessly trying to help them versus trying to control them? Because that's all you heard when they were trying to help you. Yeah. Um, well, I think anyone who cares enough to go through the conflict of telling you that probably cares mm. because it's not easy to like try and dissuade someone who's already set on their mind to something but if they actually care about you they'll put in the energy to do so if i step on a nail and it hurts that it hurts because i need to get my foot off the nail so if i'm in a place of discomfort in my life i need to feel and go through that so that i can make that change to be where i want and need to be in life and weed just would make me comfortable no matter what and um, it, eventually I would make more and more decisions that I didn't feel good about, but I could smoke and drink and not care about it. And write it off or yeah. justify it. Yeah, I'd just push it back and not feel it. I'd just light another blunt and not have to worry about it. And then eventually, like, I, for me, it was a gateway drug because, like, I just had less and less cares. I did more and more drugs. Inhibitions lower and lower. Yeah. And um, that was the struggle for me. So I uh, continued to experiment and didn't have any huge problems until consequences started getting worse and worse. Um, I got physically assaulted and tasered in a drug So when you have them build up, you were saying that they built, let, let's get to that, but let's say how they build up, the consequences started getting more. So how did they start? Give me just a random example. Like Yeah, like um, I was drinking and driving, um, hitting, I had a mailbox. For so mail, you ran into, you damaged the car a little bit. Yeah. Then what's the next level up uh, from that? It kind of just went from zero to a hundred really fast. So it was like, a lot of those situations getting in fist fights um violence and then i guess the point where i was in a drug deal it went bad i got tasered in the neck robbed someone tried to steal my car and i left that situation like oh the my god the dealer I'm tasered you yeah so wow so the de you got tasered in the neck by a drug dealer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and i also at the same time i, I have sold drugs in the past as well so like, it was like a way to feed my habit. So I was like, not only did I become addicted to drugs, I became addicted to money and a lifestyle, and I'm really not equipped for that. 
at all. Like, to the core, I'm really sensitive. Yeah. And, like, I and a have, sweet person, not yeah. this gangster girl that's going to... And I had this hard exterior and shut down, and we, I would pretend I had no feelings. I mean, like, so, when I when the guy tried to steal my car and it went really bad, I, um, I left that scenario thinking, like, oh, my God, thank God I'm alive. Uh, I'm so grateful to be alive. Um, and I realized I need to start making a change. So on my own, I was like, well, I'll just drink. I won't do drugs. Then when I would drink, I would end up doing drugs. So, or if I did drugs, I'd end up drinking. And not, it wasn't just the physical problems. It was emotionally. I was just at a low point. Like I didn't know, but like drugs, like an alcohol, the, like the, a lot of them are depressants. And I was really depressed and like, like I hated life and I had no purpose and no goals and nothing. I had to change everything. I changed where I lived. I changed who I hung out with, um, the things I did. Uh, and my sister actually, she reached her hand out and offered me to come live with her in North Florida. And that's where I got sober. Um, I didn't go to detox because I was young. Um, so my accessibility to some things was kind of based around school. I hadn't completely thrown my life away. So, uh, I would have like three days where I'd use heavily, then I maybe not use as heavily for one or two days. Recover for a couple days. Yeah, but I definitely, um, I did not feel good when I came down, and emotionally, I didn't have my coping skills anymore. Like that's how I coped with my everything I felt in life. So I was really, really angry. Yeah, you were out of your normal answers. You said something real interesting. You said you changed all this stuff because you wanted everything to change. You changed everything. Mm -hmm. When you were going through that inner dialogue just now, it sounded to me, listening to it, like there was two entities in her. Like the good and the bad. There's two entities in everybody. Right, but didn't you hear that when she was telling me? It was like the devil and the angel on the shoulder in the old cartoons. And you're listening to like both. Mm -hmm. No, 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 they don't know what they're talking about. Listen, this is the better way. No, 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 they're full of shit. No, 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 like. I always like to say it was like my spiritual being versus the physical world. Mm -hmm. So like the wanting, the physical world is very immediate, instant gratification. Like what car can I buy? What watch can, what thing can I do to make me feel good right away? And then like for my spiritual being, it's like a commitment to a process that isn't instant. And like I have to quiet down and slow down to hear that voice and get that guidance. Versus when I'm only in the physical, it's like next, next thing. Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? What am I going to get? So you're always in this battle between the spirit and the flesh. Well, it, we all it, are. In active addiction, addiction, like there was no battle. I was simply living for myself. And I was so like accustomed to it that I didn't even notice there was anything spiritual going on. I probably would have told you I was an atheist. I had no connection to anything. It was just like, this is what I'm doing. And when I would have God, I would have these moments of clarity, like getting robbed where I'd be like, oh my God, like, I don't know why, because I would have told you I was an atheist, but I had these God moments that would just come up as like... But the third word you said was, oh my God, oh yeah. my God, the atheist reaching out to God. Yeah, exactly. So once I moved and changed everything, I ended up staying sober, and I'm still sober today, and that was July 21st, 2011. Wow. Yeah. So, how, are you not supposed to ask a woman that? How old are you now? 24. So, so I just did it. 24, and you've got seven years. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, this has been this has been an awesome discussion, um, Hannah. I want to thank you again for coming. Uh, I think that you're just a shining uh, vessel of light. So. I hey, thanks for watching Recovery Shared. Please go to our about page on our channel, and you'll find links to treatment centers that we've reviewed and recommend. Also on our about page, you'll find helpful links to traditional and non-traditional recovery help. Let's help each other together. We can help save a life.